What's going on everybody? It is Sparks Comics here. It is time to talk about this week's top indie comic picks for new comic book day. And I know I'm a little bit late on this, but there are a lot of good picks this week. So let's talk about them for the number 10 spot. I've got one from Scout Comics. It is Forever Forward, issue number two from Zach Kaplan, Arjuna Susini, and we are in the year 2121, 100 years into the future, after surviving an invasion of America and catastrophic tr catastrophic superstorms, flawed scientist Lewis Moody and his friends find their time machine damaged, stranding them in a post-apocalyptic landscape. In order to find a brighter future that can return them to their time, they must return their cohesion, navigate an anarchist outpost, and avoid a mysterious human faction worshiping AI robots. Will the future ever get better? The only way forward, or only way back is forward. So they're gonna keep time traveling into the future as they're able to, to continue to try to return to their their present. Uh, it's been, issue one was great. I'm excited to see uh, the rest of this series. Coming in for number nine, I've got from IDW Publishing, True Cult, number three, from Scott Brian Wilson and Liana Kangas. We're off the grill and into the fryer with this one, gang. Marty and Allison go deep undercover in their headquarters of the Church of the Immortal Heartbeat. But can their squishy mortal minds stand up to the devilish dilemmas that await them inside? Also, Bernice and Veronica Vargas Vo go head to head. It's going to be messier than the back booths after a youth soccer team lunch. You know the kids we're talking about. It's secrets, lies, and a side of fries, and soft skills, and C-minus nachos. I love the descriptions that they come up with for this, the very fast food themed descriptions, and this has been a very fun story to read and very interesting plot lines we got going on here. Liana Kangas's art is phenomenal as always, so please go check this one out. Number eight is a pick that we should be getting a number one and a number two of it this week, and that is As of the Barbed, number two from Scout Comics, written by Pat Shand, art by Rio Burton, and this one had a very unfortunate thing happen on issue number one. Half of it got printed with the words, and half of it got printed without the words. So got about 12 pages with words and the rest had no words in it. They said issue one should be releasing the same day as issue number two, or I guess re-releasing the same day as issue number two. So hopefully that does happen here. This is a really interesting story. Issue two, it says trapped in a body she doesn't recognize. Aza is confronted by an ancient deity when the Bone Wolf, a towering monstrosity with power over life and death, makes as an offer. She will have to choose between her own safety and becoming a weapon of the gods. Meanwhile, a darkness descends over Aza's village, leaving her sister Ali, a fresh soldier out of introductory training to deal with an apocalypse level threat. Number seven this week, going to Image Comics, we got 10,000 black feathers from the Bone Orchard mythos from Jeff Lemire, and Andrea Sorrentino, colors by Dave Stewart, the new series in the shared universe, horror universe, the Bone Orchard mythos continues, Trish and Jackie continue to be pulled deeper into the fantasy world that they have created, but the terrors of the real world are difficult to separate, and their teenage daydreams are proving to be equally dangerous. I love that we're getting this horror world created, horror universe, this probably, I will probably read this one, um, single issues. I may wait for some of these other ones for trades. There are going to be some that are original graphic novels, like the first, first, uh, story of the world. Um, so I'll, I'll probably do a mix of things to, to read this, this universe, but I am very excited overall for it because, uh, Jeff Lemire's mind on creating worlds is something I can get behind and I'm ready to see his mind create a horror universe. Number six this week going to Source Point Press for Garrett Gunn and Christina Blanche's newest story, Postmasters, issue number one. Ruben Mocho doing the artwork 
And in a post-pandemic America, one of the only things still remotely functioning is the mail. But with mass casualties to their ranks, the Postal Service has been forced to adapt to a consistently more aggressive set of routes with less and less carriers to service them. One of the last remaining postmasters, 32, sets out to deliver a one-of-a-kind letter that's mysteriously appeared at the Western States Distribution Center. Rugged terrain, highway robbers, and the wicked all stand between 32 and his destination. But he knows the motto, neither rain nor sleet nor dark of night, will stay the swift and timely completion of his assigned route. Postmasters number one, the number six pick, and it, it just didn't make the top five because there is so much coming out this week that is fantastic and great and should be in the top five, um, but it's just that kind of a week where you can't put it all there. Number five this week is one of my favorite ongoing um, re repeating mini series that we've got from Boom Studios, and that is Wind. Wind Thrown in the Sky, number three coming out this week. James Tyne IV, Michael Dialinis doing the artwork. And uh, just, I love this world. I love wind. I love all the characters in this world. Uh, it's just so good. If I could recommend one book, one indie book to anybody out there, it's wind. Uh, it, it deserves to be read. It needs to be read. More people need to check this out. This, if you're into fantasy, you're missing out if you haven't read Wind. Uh, there are two volumes already out. This is the third volume. We're on issue three of five, so it won't be long until there's a collected edition of this one as well. And what's happening in issue three? A moment of rest was a moment ill spent. As General X arrives in full force with murderous intent, even as the children and the feather fathers break free and flee, things seem dire before an unexpected figure brings help. That's number five. Number four through number one are all number ones, just like uh, Postmasters, we had a number one there. And for number four, we're sticking with Boom Studios. We are going to talk about the return of Eve. We have Eve, Children of the Moon, Issue number one of five from Victor Lavelle and Joe Migyong. Are you on Indito doing the cover A? The long-awaited return of the best-selling sci-fi adventure is finally here. Eve seemingly saved the world once already, embarking on a perilous quest to protect what remained of humanity after a deadly virus outbreak. But the story doesn't end there. Eve. Eve's sister and Wexler face new challenges in a darkness from the past. In this exciting sequel series from award-winning author and lauded professor, professor Victor Lavelle and returning Eve artist Joe Mi Gyeong. Perfect for fans of Little Monsters and what's the furthest place from here? Eve, Children of the Moon, continues to ask, what kind of world are we leaving for our children? Coming into the top three now, we are very indie here on these last couple, and for good reason. They all look amazing. We're going with the number three pick is the very first book from What Not Publishing, and that is Alpha Beta's number one of four from Kyle Starks, Trevor Richardson, Kenny Aitken, and Michael Calero. Origins Part One. It's Rick and Morty meets Tron as top gamers Eddie Buck, Mason, and Tommy find themselves caught in the middle of a high-stakes battle between the U.S. government and a digital terrorist inside the virtual realm of video games. Now they must save the pixelated world of Nimbus to prevent catastrophic consequences in the real world. Based on the new animated series with over 7 million views, Alpha Betas is a collaboration between popular YouTube creators Evan Van Vanos Gaming Fong, Marcel, basically I do work, Cunningham, Tyler, I am Wildcat, Wine, and Brian Terrorizer Hanby with more than 600 million, 60 million subscribers across their channels, and the voice talents of Hollywood heavy hitters like Paget Brewster from Community, 
Stephanie Beatrice from Brooklyn Nine Nine, and Chris Parnell from Rick and Morty. Comic looks awesome. The show looks awesome. Go check this one out. The first book from Whatnot Publishing. So that piece alone, pretty cool. We're seeing a new publishing company come out, and this is their first book, and it is already starting out at such a high level. And the second book they just announced is Broke 100K Orders, uh, Ninja Funk. So go check these out. Alpha Beta is number one coming out this week for New Comic Book Day. Number two on the list, going over to SourcePoint Press for Hyper Aware One Shot from Jonathan Hedrick and Deborah Lancianis. I'm sorry, Deborah, I just cannot say that last name uh, despite all of my practicing. After three astronauts are stranded in deep space, they learn that only two of them will be able to enter hypersleep for the long return home. One of the crew members makes the difficult decision to remain awake and live the rest of his life alone with the with only the space words on spacecrafts onboard AI for company. But when the other two astronauts wake up, they discover something horrible has happened while they were unconscious. What happened in that? I I can't wait to see this. Uh, this is a really cool project that Jonathan and Deborah created, and. Uh, they also teamed up to put out Quicksand from uh, some Kickstarters that he's been doing, and I think their 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 work together is phenomenal. So I'm very excited about this one shot coming from SourcePoint Press. And my number one book this week is going over to Red Five Comics for Dead Kingdom number one from Etienne Derepentigi. Der I'm so sorry. Etienne, I am very sorry, um, but I know also on this we have Jerome Gagnon and Kurt Belcher uh, doing the edits, Jerome doing the letters, and Etienne was kind enough to send me a copy of issue one to review. I did a review of that over on the You Promised Me Comics website. I haven't recorded that review yet, but just... If you're into zombies in a different time period, just like Cover the Dead with Lime, check this one out. This is a even different time period from that. We're looking at uh, medieval times. We're looking at knights, and we're looking at that sort of story going on, and zombies coming about in a way that you aren't gonna you aren't gonna expect. I feel like. Like I said uh, in my review, got some sorcery, we got something special going on with one of the weapons, and this is what the, the description says, a mysterious plague is haunting the kingdom. With the help of a peacekeeper, a group of soldiers investigate a village that may hold the answers to what is coming, to what is happening. But the, few, the truth is far worse than everyone could ever imagine. Dead Kingdom is a five-part multi-layered saga that will explore a world where sorcery brotherhood and love collide with the rising nightmare of the living dead go check this one out this one my top pick and i think probably one of the uh these last couple i think the most indie books on here you know further away from our image and boom of uh idw dark horse those big known names uh of course we got also on here scout comics uh twice we've got uh, another source point press book on here so we got a lot of different indie publishers also out this week. Uh, Popstar Assassin number two of volume two. Um, we also have uh, Deadliest Bouquet, which honestly I wanted somewhere in my top 10, but it I couldn't fit it. And it's phenomenal. And everyone should be reading Deadliest Bouquet from Image Comics. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a solid week for indie comics. So go check them all out. Uh, and while you're here, let me know what you're looking forward to in the comments, uh, and drop a like on the video on your way out. As always, collect what you love, and we'll see you next time.